Hi guys, uh, I'm Mike. We are F1 Fanatics and oh, here's Ash. Ash. And we are at Silverstone and as you can tell, it is Brilliant. soaking wet. And uh, yeah, hopefully it is gonna be a great day's racing. Luckily we're in Woodcote, so uh, we've got to stand with a cover on. So hopefully it won't get too wet, it's just getting there. I literally rain in my face. Anyway guys, here is our vlog of the British Touring Cars at Silverstone. I hope you enjoy. Oh, just lost the end there, but basically guys, yeah, here we go. Here is our vlog of Silverstone. So just like our Brands Hatch one uh, we did for the W Series finale, I will be talking over some pictures and running through the kind of action of the day and um, our general thoughts on the day. So uh, yeah, guys, here it is. Um, so as like in Brands Hatch, we started off the day with a pit walk and we're going to focus on the british touring cards as obviously it was the main event of today i do have to admit obviously this is my first british touring cards event and i don't follow it too closely but i was excited to see some good racing on track and with the rain um that we had it certainly was but here we are on the pit walk so this pit walk was a little bit different to the dtm one that we saw at brands hatch and if you are a fan of the drivers and an avid fan of the british touring cards I think this is a really cool event here, actually. Uh, you just see a guy facing tyres. But you can see like everyone's walking down um, here. But basically, what happened is, is the garages were all open and all the drivers for the British Touring Cars team were out and they were signing kind of little postcards. They were signing posters and stuff. They were giving out kind of uh, free uh, motor oil, free um, car shampoo and stuff, just to kind of benefit uh there i think obviously you know it's the classic type of marketing if you get people to try out your product for free uh then they're more likely to buy it but yes they were all setting up there uh getting signed autographs so yeah if you're a big fan of your drivers it was a really uh good chance to get up to close get a picture with them get some signed memorabilia with them which is a really kind of nice memorabilia of the day this is the adrian flux team garage who are obviously sabara uh, racing and um, their drivers are senna proctor and ashley sutton uh, Ashley Sutton didn't do too badly on the day actually, he had quite a uh, thing, I don't think Senna Proctor actually did too well himself, but yeah, just looking in behind here, getting the tyres ready for the day, obviously tyre choice was going to be a difficult one, whether to go on slicks and wets, because throughout the day, um, the weather conditions were really difficult, but you can uh, see here, obviously the queue started to form for people seeing their favourite drivers, uh, me personally, obviously not following the British Touring Cars, uh, that closely I preferred the stuff at the DTM where you got to see the cars in the garage so actually after this we went round um, to the front and we got to look into the garages a little bit more so here is the uh, UASA uh, Honda team who drives for them we have Matt Neal who's obviously an experienced champion within the sport and obviously Dan Kamish one of the title contenders was there we also had Andrew Jordan there and then the uh, BMW's Oliphant there and then we'll move across I think in a second to Turkington's garage who is obviously leading the championship at the moment one of the main contenders but just before we go we're going to start off with some footage of a BTC race so here we go So this guy was uh, this guy's was race one of the day. I know I've got um, Jake Goff there uh, up on screen, but race one of the day was run by um, Ingram, uh, who won actually two out of the three races day. And I said there, Jake Goff was the second winner of the day. And the BTC uh, current standings after this week's race was Colin Turkington um, extending his lead at the top at 297 points. Dan came with second with 281 and Andrew Jordan 280. And I think Josh Cook's still just about in touch on 263 points. But they're the main kind of title contenders. Uh, the first race was probably the um, best race of the day. As you can see some pictures of some overtaking happening on track with uh, Tom Ingram there. Um, yeah, it was kind of lots of on-track action. Uh, the cars are really close to each other. Obviously, yeah, you can see it's absolutely manic. It's a huge field and it's so tight and they have to be so careful with each other. <laughs> Obviously, 
there is a, le a lot more bumping allowed in things. In race one and race two of the day, they do tend to be a little bit more cautious, although in race one, you can see Mark Blundell there, former Formula One driver, um, uh, yeah, damaged his car there. And then obviously, I think this was Proctor actually had an engine issue uh, with his car, so had to retire from the race. There is uh, Tom Chilton, who is Max Chilton's brother, obviously Formula F1 driver, and a uh, driver who is now uh, in IndyCar, I believe, Max Chilton. Uh, that was just before um, the second race. That was the drivers there going round uh, for the fans to see. And this was the start of the second race. And as you can see, there had been rain. And like I said, um, there was mixed conditions all the way. There's Tom Ingram, who was the eventual winner of this second race. But the second race actually was a really fantastic race. But you're going to see in a second um, the pictures come in and it got really dark and really wet but it was quite near the end of the race so what they did actually in the end is because conditions were too dangerous yeah i presume they were too dangerous on these slick tires they decided to red flag the session and so that race was ended and then we are into uh race three of the day uh which was won by uh who i said it uh, Jack Goff but I think the real highlight for me you see lots of pictures of him here was Aidan Moffat he had an absolutely superb race and he actually might have gone on to win the race um, if he hadn't have spun out which he was riding in second place at the time dropped back to I believe fifth but then made his way back up again to second to finish the race I believe Colin Turkington in all the races uh, managed to finish above his nearest championship rival, so that was a really good chance to extend the lead. But that, guys, um, basically sums up the British touring cars um, part of this section, and I will leave you with the British touring cars section with just seeing how kind of dark and wet the racing got at the end with a short clip here. Enjoy, guys. <laughs> As you can see here, our second stop of the day was the F4. Well, it wasn't actually the second stop of the day here, but I'm going to focus on this now as um, this was the highlight of the day for me. I did really enjoy the British touring cars, um, but I am a single-seater fan at heart, and a chance to kind of see the British F4 Championship and some young stars of the future in action was really fantastic. And it was really difficult conditions because the race started dry, and then in this first race, and then went on to be a difficult uh, race. There were lots of spins within it as well. So Zane Maloney and Sebastian Alvarez uh, were the championship leaders. And Zane Maloney finished second in the first race. And Sebastian Alvarez first in the uh, first race. But they actually, Sebastian Alvarez took Zane Maloney out in the second race. Which, um, yeah, wasn't a great move by him. He was trying to bold overtake. And he just kind of... Uh, went off on the track and he should have lifted off the accelerator but he came back onto the track and just spun both of them out. I think Zane was very frustrated by the whole situation here. Um, but yet yeah, there was such tricky conditions. Like I said there were lots of spins. Um, unfortunately the main man of the day who was spinning was Mexican Mariano Martinez and he looked like he was having fantastic races in both and just when he got into a position that was really good he would then spin out and crash he is in that livery there of the orange and green when looking through uh at the race pictures i believe um in the second race it was tommy foster who was able to secure the victory and the race results haven't been up to check and within the rain it was pretty chaotic to kind of keep up with things from there but yeah it means that going into the uh season finale at silverstone at, not Silverstone, at Brands Hatch in a couple of weeks, 
it is going to be a really exciting end to that season with Zane Maloney and Sebastian Alvarez probably both looking to secure an F3 seat uh, at least regional wise for next year so it'll be interesting to see if either of them can do that but the real fascination for me in F4 is getting a chance to look at these young guys racing and seeing who might be a future star in F1 but the overtakes were great it was fantastic racing on track fantastic wet conditions and in honour of spinning in the ra rain it's first return since Hockenheim here you go a bit of a clip here so you can see that spray going up this was on the first lap and then you see contact spin out oh what a disaster and in the first race actually third position was a little bit of a curse um, because I think the person in third place spun out. I think there were three different drivers who spun out in third position. But there you go, guys. Uh, that rounds off the action from the F4. And our third racing series of the day, guys, is the Porsche Carrera Cup GB. And the big highlight of this weekend was a massive congratulations to Dan Harper, who was declared the provisional 2019 Porsche Carrera Cup champion. And he is the youngest driver to achieve this title in the uh, history of the championship. So uh, it's really exciting to see what his future may hold in a higher racing series. Uh, yeah forthcoming he was able to beat off his championship rivals Josh Webster and Lewis Plateau uh, by getting a seventh place finish in the first race which I thought was the best race of the day uh, well the best Porsche race of the day um, there was plenty of action on track and there was a little bit of rain towards the second part of the race which kind of really spiced things up and made conditions really difficult um, out there so yeah a massive congratulations to him um, obviously another probably driver of note is Esme Hawkey who obviously like I said uh, he, she's been made famous by the W series well I say made famous um, people like me who are kind of casual watcher you can see her there in the picture um, and now uh, know of her more because of uh, the exposure that she's got from the W series um, as you can see here uh, there's a uh, the peppermint green Porsche uh, was on show a little bit more in the photos one because it was involved in the most exciting battle pack there was lots of kind of close racing uh, between that pack but also because my girlfriend's dad really loved that color on the Porsche 911 and he's a huge Porsche 911 fan um, so he wanted plenty of pictures of that car um, but yeah you can see here in the second race they were a little bit cautious in the second race uh, conditions were pretty difficult on track so uh, yeah, it was a very reserved race and there wasn't very many bold, risky overtakes to get in. But you can see just by these pictures and the kind of headlights on show just how dark it was getting um, in the latter part of the day. This was the uh, last race before the final race of the day, which was the British Touring Cars. So you could see the clouds were rolling in. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, it was fantastic to see so many of the Porsche 911s absolutely amazing car on track and competing um yeah a very good racing series uh, obviously the super gt follows the formula one um, and now guys we will be moving on to our last uh, racing series of the day and that was the janetta junior championship so here's some footage from the first okay, lap we go racing on the line they go it's a slippery start as you would expect And this is our final uh, kind of series of the day, and that is the Janetta Junior Championship. You just saw them uh, racing through Cops, which was turn one on the uh, Silverstone National uh, Circuit. So, yeah, obviously it's a lot shorter circuit to the Grand Prix one, um, but still kind of left a lot of entertaining racing. Um, probably was my least favourite series of the day, but that's just because of how young they are they're inexperienced on track uh, it is junior there and obviously if they are making collisions on track uh, it is a little bit more costly 
for them as well so um understand we're a little bit more cautious and they are learning trade and again it was incredibly difficult conditions it may be the first time that some of them had been racing in such difficult conditions um as well in such powerful cars but it was still uh entertaining to see um didn't really know many of the drivers on show but it's obviously a place the Ginetta junior championship where a lot of people start their racing careers it's kind of the first steps into motor racing um it's easily oh, i say easily accessible i think it's 35 grand to make yourself um accessible into the sport but we all know that motorsport is a heavily invested um sport and to kind of get yourself into so it is um yeah it was entertaining to see that on track and some of the liveries on the cars uh really nice customizations and great but there we go guys that was a round off of a day and i'll leave you to me and ash uh to give you the rundown so that is our day at silverstone complete a bit are... windy yeah a bit windy a bit cold a bit wet but it was a great day's racing wasn't it ash it was we had the return of spinning in the rain right in front oh, of us i've missed it i oh, know spinning in the rain um, Good overtaking in pretty much every race. Highlight for me was the F4, but we're single seater buyers, so. No, do you know what? Highlight for me was probably the second race for the British touring cars. Battles right through, um, and Ingram getting his second win. It was it was actually fantastic to watch, and um, who was it? That, um, Colin Turkington, wasn't it? That came through the it pack and ended up finishing second. So. Really good result there as well. Was it? Anyway, guys, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. We will catch you soon with our race review. Where we on will Tuesday. be warmer because we will be inside. That's a lot smart place to do videos. Anyway, guys. So, guys, that was our day at Silverstone. We had an absolutely fantastic time, and I really recommend um, going to the British Touring Cars and supporting it. Uh, they go all over circuits, obviously around England. So, I'm sure there's at least one of the race meets around the year that you can go to but uh, yeah it was absolutely superb we were lucky obviously being at Silverstone we were in stands that were undercover and so when we get the action of it in the rain we weren't actually getting too wet ourselves um, but guys yeah fantastic day hope you enjoyed the video and I'll run down of it uh, if you were there comment below uh, let us know your thoughts about the day uh, <coughs> give us a thumbs up if you like the video and don't forget if you are new around here subscribe to the channel keep up to date with all our latest content uh yeah you guys have a good one thanks for watching and uf1 fans keep racing